Hello everyone, welcome to the Network Management Commands lesson on the Linux Fundamentals Beginner Level course presented by PentesterUniversity.org. So today I want to talk about some of the common networking commands and then we're going to run through some demos of these commands as well. First command I want to talk about is ifconfig and basically that command is a quick look and configuration of network cards so you can actually do that on the fly in the command line. Number two is ping. You're probably all familiar with that, and that is ICMP request, and that's used to check if a host is online or not. Uh, sometimes you may have a host that drops off, and that's just a quick way to check if they're actually responding. However, uh, ping is not useful if it, there is a firewall in place and they are blocking the ping ICMP echo requests. Third command is traceroute, and that's used to basically visualize the packet travel from the sender to the destination. And sometimes when you have packets that are arriving corrupted or incomplete at the destination or just never make it there, uh, certainly you want to use traceroute to try to pin down and figure out where the problem is. However, the internet has basically become more adaptive to that. So if the problem was out on the WAN somewhere, the, the wide area network uh, being the internet, and there is a, uh, a switch or something that goes down it, it generally has failovers to continue on down the path so netstat takes a quick look at the active connections and you can narrow that down by uh, any kind of network card there the fifth command ns lookup is useful for looking up name servers and ip addresses and you're going to see here in these next couple of commands that they're kind of all versatile they do almost the same thing uh, but each one has its own benefits and we'll certainly step through that the next command is dig, and that's useful to query a DNS server to find out all host names and IP addresses uh, of what you specified. Number seven is route, used to show, add, and edit routes. Think of a switch almost inside of your Linux machine. And host is useful for finding IPs and DNS entries. ARP is simply used to display and modify the ARP cache of your local machine. The eth tool command, although not used commonly these days, uh, is useful for displaying network adapter properties. And iwconfig uh, is useful for, for displaying really detailed information about your wireless card in particular. The command host name actually displays the local host name of the current machine that you're on right now, uh, where you issue that command from. And last but not least, the whois command, and that queries the Aaron whois database to search for IP and domain name info. The caveat to that is sometimes it's not installed on certain machines. For instance, I'm using Ubuntu right now uh, to make these these lessons, and it's actually not included on this on this machine as a package by default. So you have to do your apt get and install that package. So next, let's go take a look at a demo, and we'll use some of these commands and, and walk through them. Okay guys, let's talk about some of these commands here in this demo. Now the first command we'll try out is ifconfig. Now very common command used in most every single network possible that has Linux or Unix working on it. Um, so sometimes the caveat to that is you have to actually do it as a sudoer. Sometimes it requires those privileges. Uh, depends on the operating system and how the security setup. In our case here, we're just going to try out this command here, ifconfig. And you can see it gives you the information about the current network adapters that are in your system. So you always have your loop back. That's always in every single system possible. And you have any other network cards that you have. So in my case here, I have WL01. And that specifies that it's my wireless card, even though it says Ethernet. Um, and it tells you the IP address. And it tells you the hardware MAC address. Uh, I can tell you the broadcast address here and the subnet mask as well. Uh, and it gives you a bunch of different information like the INET 6, uh, which is IP version 6 stuff. And it'll give you packets sent, any kind of errors dropped, overruns, frame rates, things like that. Uh, so, in fact, that is the ifconfig command. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. So the next thing we're going to do here is ping. And it's ping www.yahoo.com and hit enter. But if you notice here, it's just going to keep pinging and keep pinging and keep pinging. We didn't give it any kind of commands to tell it when to stop. Now to stop that, you hit control C and it'll give you your statistics at the bottom. So you can see here that there were nine packets sent, uh, nine received. So that means 0% packet loss. And the total time here was 8,011 milliseconds and gives you some other information down here as well. So to 
defeat that, of it just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling until you hit control C, we offer the count flag to it. And again, you can find this in the man pages. But uh, we're just going to do ping, tack C, and then we're going to specify a count of three. And we'll do our host that we're going to ping again. And I should see here it only spits out three packets, three packets transmitted, and three received, 0% loss. So that's how you can actually count it. So if you had to do, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, 42, or whatever, you can always specify it with the TAC lowercase c. Let's go ahead and clear the screen again. So let's talk about the trace route command. And again, we're going to be using Yahoo here as an example. So let's go trace... Now, this wasn't actually installed inside of Ubuntu either, so be careful if it says command, if it says command not found, of course, it's probably just not installed, uh, or you're not doing it under sudo or privileges, uh, and simply you can just install the package. So we'll do www.yahoo.com again, and you see here it's going through my internal gateway. And it's just punching out a bunch of information here, so uh, you can see that we had, when it gives some sort of stars here they can you can tell that it had a problem with the initial for, uh, second hop here and then it automatically took over and went to this IP address here and you can tell this is an ISP of sorts and then it just went on through all the way over till it actually reached its destination which is this address here now of course for whatever reason here it keeps saying dot 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 but we've already known that we reached our destination here so that pretty much wraps up the traceroute command. Now let's go ahead and do a netstat command. Let me clear out the screen here. Now netstat is um, it's pretty useful to figure out uh, different protocols and different established connections and waiting connections, open connections, things like that. Uh, you can you could even drill down as far as like in the three-way handshake of TCP to find out what status that packet is at, sin wait or sin or ack or SYNAC, or established, or whatever. Uh, so certainly, there is a ton of options, and I definitely recommend you consult the manual pages on this one, because there's just so many options that we could spend a whole day going over it. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to just type in TACT for TCP, and I want to see all of my established connections for TCP. And if I hit enter here, you can see uh, I have quite a bit established here. Now, I got a couple of web pages open, and I have some apps open that are connecting out. Uh, you can see here, for instance, the MSN bot. That's actually my Skype that I'm using uh, to communicate with some students. And you can see I have a bunch of other stuff going on here. So we're actually just going to grab one IP here. And we'll grab this one because it doesn't really reverse to anything. And I'm not sure what that is just yet. So I'll kind of copy that here for our next demo. And that is going to be the NS lookup. Now, NS lookup can be used a couple different ways. And again, the manual pages are your friend here. Let me go ahead and clear out the screen. And if we did NS lookup on, let's say, www.yahoo.com, you can see it spits out some information now. Uh, the server that it's using here is my local loopback, which really is just bogus information. Uh, so say, for instance, it, it spits out all this information, non-authoritative answer from the DNS server, yahoo.com. The canonical name is, and this is the reverse DNS name here, um, to yahoo.com. I guess that's the server that it's running off of. And then you have the actual IP addresses here of each one of these individual servers with these host names here. So if we want to try to do it by IP address, let me just show you how that looks. And we'll use our example I just copied before from our netstat command. And you can see it says server can't find, so it's not a domain name. Okay, let me go ahead and clear out the screen here. So let's go ahead and use the dig command. Uh, at this point, really, I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but the manual pages are your friend. These commands, you can go very, very much in specific depth with them, and you can do a lot of very specific things with them. Uh, in this example here, in these examples, we're actually just doing very basic queries uh, just to show you how the commands actually work. So simply I'm going to dig www.yahoo.com and once I hit enter there you're going to see it sort of sort of kind of spits out the same information as NS lookup did but uh, we do have a couple of additional tidbits of information in here. So you can see here that it says yahoo.com and it's CNAME record in the DNS server. 
is actually this domain name here. And then you can see they have a bunch of different IP addresses for these domain names, which is the same domain name. So it looks like they're using some sort of failover uh, or something to that effect. So um, that pretty much wraps it up for the dig command. Again, you can go very much in depth here. You can pull out certain records, things like that. So consult the manual pages. So let's go to the route command. Let me go ahead and clear something out here. Now, um, one thing I want to touch about on the NS lookup command before we go to the route command is you can specify another DNS server to look up. So, or to use to look up, I should say. So if we do the yahoo.com again, you can see it uses our bogus DNS server here. Now, if I wanted to use Google's DNS server, for instance, I can do the same command. And then at the end here, I can actually do, I could specify, whoops, specify the DNS server I'd like to use to query. Uh, this domain name from. And you can see now it's changed the actual DNS server. That's one of Google's DNS servers there. But it relatively spit out the same information. So if, you've, if, you, if you're starting to think that maybe you have bad information inside your cache or something like that uh, in your DNS server that you're using locally, you can certainly specify another one to mitigate that or find out if you actually do in fact have that problem or not. So let's move over to the route command. So simply, if you type route, you can see all of the routes that you have currently set up in your system right now. Now, I don't have a whole lot here um, in, in this system. It's fairly new, uh, but you certainly could add, change, and modify routes in here. And if you did man route, you can see that uh, it's quite a tool that you can use to pretty much make any kind of changes and, and do some really fancy stuff here. So uh, definitely go ahead and read that. So you can see route add uh, net, and then you can add all of your information here. So let me go ahead and clear this out. And let's talk about the host command here for a minute. Uh, so go ahead and type in host, and then we'll do www.yahoo.com and hit enter. Now you can see that this brings up quite a bit more information, very similar to the uh, NSLOOKUP commands and the DIG commands here. Uh, but you can see it also brought up some IP version 6 addresses here as well. And it uh, brought up those same sets of IP addresses and their DNS aliases and things like that. Uh, so some of these commands do intertwine. Some of them are very similar. It's just whatever you're comfortable with here. But again, each has their own different switches. So some commands can go deeper than others and, and obtain more information than others. So that said, let's go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now let's talk about ARP. Um, really, if you just issued the ARP command, you can see your ARP cache. Now your ARP cache is anytime an IP address uh, comes across a network here, it is stored in here. And certainly you can take a look at this ARP cache as well. Now there's some uh, attack that used to be pretty popular called app or ARP cache poisoning. And certainly you could poison the ARP cache. So when somebody goes to reach out to an IP address that they once had communication with before, they would be redirected to another malicious host or a target. So that said, let's go ahead and clear that out. Now the ETH tool command, not really useful these days. And I'll show you why. Um, simply ETH tool. And actually I gave it some bad arguments here. Uh, let's say I wanted to look at my wireless card whoops it doesn't give you very much information right it just says link detected great <laughs> so uh, I'm sure if you man eth tool there's a ton of different stuff in here uh, certainly like I said it's always worth consulting the manual pages to see exactly what you can and cannot do with it so what I did gave me almost no information uh, but I'm sure if I use some of these switches that uh, I would have gotten some more in-depth or detailed information from that. So let me go ahead and clear out the screen here. Now, IWconfig is one of my favorites when you're running a wireless uh, card of any type here. So it can give you a lot of information. So let's just go IWconfig and hit enter. So now you can see that there's no wireless extensions in my loopback adapter. Of course there's not because it's a physical you know, make-believe uh, device, so to speak. Uh, and then you have my wireless card here denoted as the WL01. 
and it could tell you that it's on 802.11 and the wireless network I'm connected to and the name and it can tell you the mode and it tells you the frequency, the gigahertz in frequency, uh, so 2.43, um, which is really just 2.4 and it gives you the access point um, actual MAC address, which is helpful in some cases. And it give you the bit rate. You can see that uh, I don't have the highest bit rate as of that snapshot right there. I do have some radio interference going on right now, uh, but usually I hover around 140 megabits per second. Uh, and then you can see that the the actual radio power right here is 22. Uh, this is a fairly new laptop. It's not the the best wireless card in the whole world. And certainly, if you had something like a Cantenna, which I'm sure you've heard about, uh, certainly that number would be higher. So uh, you could do a retry. You can look at all sorts of information here. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, power management on, link quality, 51 out of 70. It's not that great. And again, my signal level is not uh, that great as well. Uh, and certainly it has a bunch of other stuff here about, um, you know, the RX and uh, TX devices and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and clear the screen here. Now, if you typed in the command host name, it's just going to give you a local host name. Now, this is not really helpful in any way, shape, or form, except for if you're setting this up as like some sort of domain uh, inside the network and you're having like a little Linux, uh, you know, it's not a work group, it's a domain now, uh, you can see what the current machine is actually on. Is it part of the network or is it part of the regular home group or is it part of the domain? Uh, so simply, host name will give you that information and you can change your host name with the host name command as well so instead of actually opening up the host name file uh, and making those changes you can do it right there on the fly on top of the uh, command prompt uh, or the terminal so yes you can absolutely set your host name with that let me go ahead and clear out of here and let's talk about the who is command. Now, you remember I grabbed that IP address earlier. I wasn't really sure who that was. It didn't have a reverse DNS attached to it or any kind of forward DNS attached to it or anything. Uh, so I'm a little concerned. Well, we want to know who that is. So that's a perfect example here. So who is and then the IP address and or domain name. You can do this both ways. So we'll use that IP address we copied earlier. And you can see here that it spits out a ton of info. And it'll show you the net range, the entire subnet mask, um, you know, the whole range of IP addresses that they own, the CIDR, and the net name. So it looks like MSFT, I'm guessing Microsoft. And sure enough, here it is, Organization Microsoft. And it gives you the registration date uh, all the way up till when it was updated. So last time it was updated, it was the same time it was registered. And you can see it'll give you the company name, their address that is on file in the Aaron who is database and certainly will give you all sorts of uh, tech handles and tech names and things like that so that's useful if you're having problems uh, with somebody or a domain that's spoofing emails or something like that and you, you have to reach out to them there's always a tech contact there and a uh, administration contact so let's go ahead and do one more example with that so let's do who is uh, and let's just do I don't know yahoo.com again Yeah, you can see now we have a ton of info. So let's see here. Yahoo.com. And it looks like that's their server name and their register where they register. That's that name was Wild West Domains. So that's actually a reseller account that they have. Uh, and I know that because I used to have the same thing. And let's see here. You get a bunch of different extensions on those server names. And that was registered at Enom. Uh, economical domain names um, yeah you can just see that they have a bunch of different information in there so you can certainly do this with domains you can certainly do this with um, IP addresses and it's really helpful to pinpoint or track something down uh, like I said again if you were having a problem with a website sending you spam or it's a lot of traffic from web one website you may be concerned that they're part of a botnet or something or whatever the the case could be wide and 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 vary from case to case so uh definitely use that to find out who owns domain names and who owns ip address blocks and if you've ever taken our pen testing course i talk a lot about you know validating ip ranges when you go out to your client and actually get your contracts uh this is another way that you can validate uh, those ip address blocks
So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll go to the next lesson, and I will see you there.